Hello, welcome back to Better Minecraft Mine Colony. Ah, whoops a daisy, the camera was underwater and I think that's why you couldn't hear me. So, hello and welcome back to Better Minecraft Mine Colonies. Now you join me at the site of disaster. While I was busy decorating the colony, I believe Maniacal Early came a cropper and drowned. Water wheels like this are hyper deadly in real life and it looks like in Minecraft it's no different. So Maniacal Early, while taking a swim, got kind of caught in the water wheel. Oh, it's a bit gruesome to think about, but yeah, he, uh, he got mangled up in the machinery and drowned. So pour one out for the man himself. Rest in peace, Maniacal Early. Oh, he will be missed, but not that much because we can replace him very easily. But it is very important that we do replace him because the carpenter is so essential to our builders and their building. They just really can't get the things they need without a carpenter in the colony. So manage workers and let's see who's available. We've got a Warfish Gilmore, who we recruited last episode. His intelligence is 40, but his stats are trash. But oh my god, Usagi Fash, 40 knowledge and 37 dexterity. That's a no brainer. We're going to get you into the role of carpenter. And let's just zip you over here. Hello, my dude. Welcome to the party. Oh, hello. Now, I don't know why I click on Goblin Traders because honestly, nine times out of ten, their deals are kind of boring. And today is absolutely no different. Whoa. Oh my god. Yeah. So as soon as I hired a carpenter, Looks like the couriers have zipped over because this guy has a huge backlog of work. So usually we start an episode with research, but the thing is, right, we're so far along with research, we've kind of almost researched everything we can before level four, but we'll do it anyway. Research zero of three, that means everything's been researched. But is there anything I can bash through very quickly while we do today's episode? Oh, now hang on a sec, we were looking forward to nimble and that required a rabbit's foot. We can also do festival if we can get some cakes to increase our citizens' happiness. And if we want, we can also do gourmand. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a big old civilian research episode. Aha, and that's perfect because I think at level three, the bakery can also do cookies. Level one is bread, level two is cakes, and level three is cookies. So we have our task ahead of us. Let's go and see if the rabbit hut has got any rabbit feet. Because I'm kind of curious, right? The rabbit keepers hut, they keep rabbits, they slay them and they gather the rabbit drops. But what are rabbit drops? There's rabbit hide, but what can you even use that for? And also there are rabbit's feet, but I believe rabbit's feet are kind of rare. Oh, there she is, old Tilly. Now we've got a few raccoons in here, up to no good. Hopefully they're not eating the carrots that are meant for the rabbits. But let's check on Tilly and see what she's got in her pack. Hello Tilly, what have you got in your pack? Let's hey, see. Let's Loads of carrots, not what we're looking for. What we're looking for is rabbit feet. What about the inventory in here? Wait, what? Cooked cod? Maybe that's just a meal for Tilly, because she does look like she's on low Fantastic. hunger. Well, okay, there's no rabbit's feet on her inventory <sighs> or in the hut's inventory, so we're going to have to try and get this to level 2 to get more rabbits. So what about gourmand and uh, the other one for happiness? We need cakes and we need cookies. How's it going, Nuki? What are you waiting for? Working. Ah, I imagine he's waiting on those shingles to be made by the carpenter. Now we've had a quick shuffle around over at the farm. We've designated one field to be carrots instead of all of them being wheat. And this is because now that we have the rabbit keepers hutch and also the piggy hutch, we're going to need some vegetables. We're going to need some carrots. Now check it out. I've also gone around and decorated the colony a little bit with these retaining walls all the way around the back of the plantation. And then coming over here behind the shepherd's hut and the cowhand's hut to just neaten things up and get rid of some of those sheer dirt walls. And this is going to be useful because we can put the outside defense walls on top of these because look at this, the boundaries of the colony kind of end here. So it works out kind of perfectly. 
Now at the end of last episode we said we were going to do the concrete mixer's hut, but obviously we had to hire a carpenter before we could get that started because no doubt we would need some carpentered items. But now the carpenter's back in business, let's go over and get that queued up. Now as always, Ginger has been working on the quarry underground, so she's the builder we're going to use just to get back on this and do the concrete mixer's hut, because she's never doing anything that important. The quarry is going to take a long long time to get cleared out, because it's loads of bricks to dig up. So something else I discovered right, so I was putting the concrete mixer's hut down over here, I built some more retaining walls up here, but also what I wanted to do was build the colony wall now, all the way along here back behind the suburbs. And I worked out by putting down these uh, cobblestone templates, that with wall segments they're kind of symmetrical, so you can kind of just put them next to each other, and they always match. So with the concrete mixer's hut we're going to right click, Build options, we're going to get Ginger, and yeah, all looks pretty simple. Build building. Whoa, oh there we go, the bakery is complete. Great job Alyssa. Anyway, down here at Ginger's hut, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure she's assigned to do... Oh yeah, so she's got the medium quarry, we'll cancel that. So she'll start work on the concrete mixer's hut, fingers crossed. Bring her back here, good job. So here we go, over at the town hall. Work orders, and what's going on over here? Segment 1, Segment 1, Segment 1, Segment 1. In a corner. So while we're over here, a quick look at the happiness of the colony and everything is going really good. Housing, all of these things are green except guards in the colony, which we can work on. Social factor is blue, which isn't the end of the world. And of course, well, Maniacal Early Drowned. And I accidentally punched the guy. I mean, honestly, it was it was his fault, really. He was standing where I was punching. Aside from deaths and injuries, it looks like the colony is really, really, really happy. And that's great news. That means that everybody's going to be working productively and leveling up to a nice level. Now there she is, our man with a plan, or rather our rat with a plan. Let's watch her in action and see what the concrete mixer's hut is all about. So yeah, as you can see, I've done a lot of cosmetic stuff in between episodes. I've built this retaining wall behind me using some of that mossy cobblestone and regular cobblestone and of course oak logs. And it's just a really good way of neatening up these sheer hillsides that just look really ugly and, uh, you know, clumsy. Bit by bit, we're slowly getting defences around the colony. It's not super important right now, while we're at roughly 60 colonists. But once we start to get to numbers like 100, we're going to really need some good defences because we're going to see some really heavy raids. Anyway, the Concrete Mixer's Hut, a simple build for a simple hut. Let's get in game and see if we can hire a Concrete Mixer. And so here we go, the Concrete Mixer's Hut. Oh, it's a bit rough around the edges though, I might have to dig up some of this... Uh in a corner. Oh right, so she's getting started now on the wall. It's excellent news. Oh no, there goes the shovel. Anyway, that'll do for now. So the concrete mixer's hut. Basically, the only reason this hut exists is because some recipes need concrete and concrete powder. But this is really cool. So there's like a water tower at the back. And this comes down here, and I guess the idea is this is where the concrete is mixed? I guess? So it's got main, custom recipes, tasks and settings, and it comes preloaded with things like, wait, wait, it comes preloaded with all of the concrete powders? Oh wow, yeah, okay, that's pretty cool. Oh, uh, interesting, so you don't need to teach this concrete mixer's hut any recipes at all. You can't even add recipes, there's no button for it, and that's honestly really good news. But we do still need a concrete mixer, so manage workers, and the only guy we can actually hire is a warfish, so get in here, Mr. Gilmore. What does he look like? Oh yeah, he looks like Scorpion from Mortal Kombat. Well, get over here, a warfish, and get to concrete mixing. So Ginger's going to be working on these walls all the way over there. I assume, presume, hope. And in the meantime, I'm going to show you a bit more decoration. And also, we're going to take a look and see how much Ginger has dug of the quarry that we set her to a while ago. So zippity doo dah, zippity a, off we go. What a wonderful day. Come around here. And let's go down into her hole. 
Uh huh. yeah, so it looks like she's making solid work, but she's got a long, long way to go before she finishes this quarry, so you know what, let's not worry about that. So if memory serves, oh wait, hang on a sec, yeah, so if we got the plantation thing complete, how do we set the plantation to grow two separate crops? So we've come over here, here's Jamie Butt Sniffer, the one, the only, the man, the legend, and it says he's trying to dig sugarcane. Tasks, crafting recipes, main. There's no nothing here that tells us he can grow two different crops. That's very bizarre. So we did that research, but I'm not sure it's actually worked. Maybe the building needs to be a higher level. So let's go over to the bakery and see if we can make some cookies now. So here we are at the bakery. Oh, but before we go into the bakery, I'm gonna show you my work in progress. So what I basically wanna do is tunnel under this mountain through here and connect through to the industrial district where the uh, the glassblower's hut is. And so you can see I've kind of made this makeshift underground passage bit. It's got a giant window with these uh, wooden fences and it's very much a work in progress. We're gonna expand this out deeper into the mountain and what we can do is put some housing in here, maybe a warehouse and maybe some more couriers to increase our storage of both colonists and items. So, the bakery. Oh, now here we go. This is starting to look like a real building with, uh, you know, white and red wool. Is, is that a veranda? I think that's a veranda. Anyway, let's see what recipes the bakery knows now. Oh, is this free cake? Can I actually eat this cake? No, it's a decoration cake and not a Minecraft cake. So, crafting recipes. Bread dough. Water bottle. Sweet bread. Pumpkin pie and cake batter. So we can't make cookies yet. We might have to make those manually. So how do you make cookies? I don't actually know. I've never really made a cookie in Minecraft because there's never really a reason to. Cookie and, oh my, oh no. Cocoa beans. Can I grow cocoa beans on the colony? I don't think I can. Ah, but there is a mine colonies recipe for this. Cookie dough and it uses, oh again, it uses cocoa beans. Well, Jiminy Jillicas, how do we get cocoa beans? Let's find out. Right click, cocoa beans gets us, oh, where are we? Cocoa beans, and they're obtained, aha, here we go, the sifter. I knew he was good for something. Now, with an iron mesh, the sifter will be able to get cactus, sugarcane, gold nuggets, and cocoa beans. Well, okay, it looks like we've got a clear target then. We're not going to make cookies. We're going to do the research to get the uh, sifter a better mesh. Let's head on over to Harvard. We've done most of these technology researches. No, there's nothing in technology about meshes. What about, well, is it going to be in combat or civilian? No, there's nothing in combat or civilian either. What we'll do is we'll research iron skin for now because we always want to have at least something being researched. So the second order of business this episode is getting the Enchanter's Hut to level 3. It's the one thing that's stopping us from getting a nether mine and an alchemist. So we'll go to the Military Rise and see what's going on over here. Now it should have construction tape around it. Yeah, here we go. Because we are waiting for this to get completed. But who's doing it? Alyssa is with the Mechanic's Hut. Okay. Ginger's on the wall, of course. And Nuki Slayer of Burritos is slowly working on the school, but he's got everything he needs, so that's just going to take time. So a big question is, what are we likely to need for the Enchanter's Hut? Well, looking at it right, I remember the level 2 was basically just a bigger version of this hut, and I think we're just going to need loads and loads of purple and yellow wool. So let's go and prepare that in advance. Here we go, loads of yellow dye, loads of white wool, and that makes loads of yellow wool. And we'll do the same with the purple and the, uh, and the white dye, there we go, boom. And there we go, a stack of purple, a stack of yellow. We'll probably need more, but uh, we'll wait for that. There's tons of dye in here anyway, so it's not really an issue. So let's go around and check up on our builders quickly. What does Alyssa need? What do you need to get going, my girl? Apple bottom jeans. Oh. oh. Oh, of course, right, so Alyssa is working on the Mechanic's Hut, and the Mechanic's Hut probably needs a load of wacky inventions that only the Mechanic can make, but we haven't really given the Mechanic many recipes yet, so we'll go and do a bit of that right now. Industrial Districts, here we go. Bish bash bosh. 
and we're right here at the mechanics hut with Snoo's new bond. Now I remember, she said a redstone lamp. And while we're here, we'll also teach her how to make a block of redstone. Good to me. Does she know redstone torches? Maybe, maybe not. And we're also going to teach her all of the different types of rails. And just a ticket. Looks like she's already coming over to make what we need to get this building done. So what else is going on? Let's go and see how Nuki is doing with the school. So this is going to be upgraded now to level 3. And oh man, this looks pretty amazing. I haven't seen the school since it was level 1. Oh man, it's like... Oh my god, this thing's huge. What an amazing building. Oh, I am impressed. Very... Oh, that's a bit ugly. I guess he's got to remove that pretty soon. I am very, very, very impressed. And I expect, so is Kapil Sinker. And you know what? Coming here and seeing the size of this school makes me realize we really do need to work on the underground areas of the colony so we can get more housing and way more colonists. Because if we can get loads of babies, they can get learning in school, we can get researchers, we can get librarians, we can get all the good things that we need to succeed. Oh, now things are going a bit crazy over here at the uh, the Forester because, yeah, these trees are everywhere. Oh, wait a minute. Ginger is, Ginger is really plowing through these wall segments. Let's go and see how far she is along. The military rise will give us a bird's eye view. A bird's eye view. There we go. Oh, man, yeah. So one, two segments down, and that's one, two, three, four, five segments to go. We're going to need a lot more segments before the day is out to get all the way around the colony. But it's certainly a good start, right? Uh, hello. It looks like Alyssa needs a hopper, so let's go and teach the mechanic that. Man, there are so many recipes that you do have to teach your workers, and it's so easy to forget, and later down the line just realize there is a key ingredient that your builder is missing. So, we want to put a chest here. We can drag over a regular Minecraft one from the menu on the right. There we go. Boom, hopper. A courier should zip over here with the required ingredients so Snooze Do can build a hopper. Yeah, look at Kenjiro. He is so quick. What a beast. Man, Usain Bolt can go do one because Kenjiro Parker is a sprinting machine. So, Maniacal Early's death under the horrible wheel of the sawmill means we have one more slot in the colony for a dude. And oh, Tobin, my friend, you are in luck because there is a man here called Tobin. Not, not good enough and he you. only requires hay bales. So we're going to get, finally, at long last, Tobin into the... Co Wait, do we have any hay bales? Oh no. Yeah, there we go. Whew, lucky. Close one, Tobin. And there we go, Tobin. Congratulations and welcome to the colony. Now, what are you going to become? A student or a guard? Looks like he's walking towards the student. Yeah, he's going to become a student, which means he's probably going to be either our alchemist or our nether miner, because those are the next two buildings we're going to make. Mother Poutine. Oh, disgusting. But I love it. Oh, enchanted books. Don't think so, pal. Oh, and Ricky Poutine. Ricky Poutine. What a horrible name. Oh, and there we go. The school has been built. So what's Nuki going to work on next? Oh, yeah, man. Ginger is making mega quick work of all of these wall segments. Honestly, fantastic job. Aha, at last. So it looks like Nuki is our man working on the Enchanter's Tower. Let's go over to his hut, see what he needs. So he needs barrels, which can do bookshelves, light grey wool, purple wool, of course, red, white, yellow wool. Yeah, these are all things that we mostly have. So I think he should get started straight away. So, while Nuki is working on the Enchanter's Tower, honestly, I hate calling it a tower. It's definitely not a tower, it's more like a hut. While he's working on the Enchanter's Hut, we've got a top secret mission. That's right, we're going to have to go out and find some cocoa beans. So, it's time to hit the dragon and get our old friend, more like our old enemy, Nature's Compass out. Now, I tried to use this last episode, and I failed massively because we couldn't find a single bit of desert. Any rainforests nearby? Oh, look at this! So there is a rainforest nearby. And, actually, it's only 280 blocks away. Oh man, we're a mega good luck! So, onto our dragon, and let's go prowl 
the countryside for this biome. It's this direction apparently and 200 blocks away. Man, that's so close. Where is it? I think it's this biome right here and it's a big biome, oh my god. That's a very, very, very nicely big biome. Now, speaking of dragons, man, oh, I've been watching House of the Dragon lately. I say watching, there's only one episode out already, but... Oh my god, it's fantastic. If you liked Game of Thrones, but didn't like how Game of Thrones ended, man, House of the Dragon is a top tip. Check it out. Wait, hang on a sec. No, Rainforest is like a better Minecraft variation of a jungle, isn't it? We might not find any cocoa beans here. So, nature's compass, we're going to look for jungle. Jungle. Uh -huh. Okay, so this is a bit further away, 6,500 blocks, but you know what? I'm up for a challenge. Let's do it. This is going to take me roughly 10 minutes of flying to get there. Whoa, whew, well I guess it's time lapse time. So the advantage of having straw fingers back at my camp means whenever I go out on like an exploration mission like this, when I go and do stuff, I can be rest assured that back at home, progress is being made on all of the buildings around the colony. And I saw a comment in uh, the comment section that said, how do I get my own straw fingers? Well, um, I don't know. Maybe you have to, I guess, build a scarecrow and uh, fingers crossed he comes to life as like an evil arch nemesis that generally follows you across several series throughout the decade. Here we go, the perfect place to stop over here next to this panda. How's it going, Chief? Don't mind if I do. Just pull up a pew next to you, my dude. Oh my god, did that panda just roll? Wait a minute, what's going on here? A waystone by the looks? Ah, yeah, perfect. So maybe once I get what I'm looking for, in the jungle biome, I can use the way waystone to zip home. But this, this is only going to work if I can take my dragon with me. Aha, and what do we see on the horizon? That looks like a bona fide traditional vanilla Minecraft jungle. And according to the nature's compass, yeah, 100 blocks this way. We've done it, boys. We've made it. We're in chocolate land. Oh, yeah. Come with me and you'll be in a world of pure chocolate, baby. Yum, yum, yum. So this is an interesting point. I've never in my entire life made a cocoa farm in Minecraft. I've never needed to. It's never felt like, you know, something I need to do. Coco just hasn't been relevant for a lot of things. Like, it's always like higher end modded Minecraft, and I never really bother growing cocoa beans. So, what I'd really appreciate from you guys is some advice and/or tips on the best way to farm cocoa. If you know of a good way, then let me know. Oh, hello, what are you? Very nice, enchanted hoe. Oh, a vein mining pickaxe, perfect. And a golden apple, I'll never say no to that. Pretty sweet haul. And there we go, 40 cocoa beans are pl- Wait a minute. What the hell's going on over here? What are you guys doing? Chowing down on bananas. Oh man, these scamps. Oh man, I thought their footsteps were bongo drums for a second. Anyway, let's find our dragon. Oh, luckily it's there on the map and hightail it back home. A quick look on our map shows us exactly how far we've come. Honestly, that's a pretty long journey. Now, while we're here, let's pop the nature's compass and see if we can find a desert while we're in this area. Desert, oh my god, there's a desert. Well, my dudes, we've come this far and I do have a waystone so I can teleport back. Looks like we're going 4,000 blocks in this direction to find a desert. Oh my, oh my god. You know what guys, I think I have found Australia. Oh man, I, I'm in Australia. Look at this. It's a roo. Good eye mate, how's it going? Cobweb entanglement, what's that? 
discover a spider cave? When did I find that? Anyway, look at this guy, a kangaroo. Right, so wait, if this is Australia and this is a kangaroo, does that mean these are dingoes over here? Or are they dick dicks? Are they dick dicks? Oh, it's a gazelle. Oh, very cool. Wait, hang on a sec. I might be able to find an elephant then. Back to the dragon, and let's see if we can find an elephant. I know there are no elephants in Australia, but um, I don't know. Maybe that. Maybe we'll get lucky. Maybe in this there is. Oh my god! Yes, I see them on the map. Oh my god! Oh yeah! This is what I'm talking about. Elephant tastic. Now, if I remember correctly, it's what you use acacia blossoms for. Do we have any? Yeah, acacia blossoms. Boom. 51. And I can use these to tame elephants. Is it working? How many do I need? Oh, there we go. Stampy Longnose himself is on the ship. Oh, my God. This is amazing. Can I make him sit? How do I make him sit? Are you going to stay? Oh my god, I can ride him! Oh, oh, oh I, if he could fly, this would be my new mount. Unfortunately, he cannot. But oh my god, this guy's amazing. And here it is, our glorious destination. A Minecraft vanilla desert. As we swoop in, there we go. Yeah, and already I can see cactus everywhere. So we'll park you here. Oh, now what's this? There's also Tumbleweed. That's very cool. Is that from Vanilla or... Oh no, it's from a mod called Tumbleweed. Tumbleweed from a mod called Tumbleweed. Can I punch it? A name tag? What the hell? That's weird. What about this one? Oh, look at this. Cocoa beans. Oh no, melon seeds. What are you? Sneak up on him. Oh, oh, he doesn't look dangerous. He looks very cute. Oh, look, it's a lizard. Okay. And this isn't from Alex's mob. This is just from Creatures and Beasts. Okay, cool. What's that thing? <gasps> a snake. A snake and snake. Oh, now is it going to attack me? It's a rattlesnake. It was rattling its rattler. Looks a bit deadly. Oh, yeah. Don't want to get anywhere near him. Oh, what are these? Wait, is this some kind of chicken? What the hell? Oh, it's running away. What are you, dude? Oh, it's a road runner. Oh, I wonder if there's coyotes as well. Now, what is that blue thing on the map? This is a puzzle. Oh, it's that weird mosquito. Oh, whoa, look at this. It's like the skeleton of like some kind of giant dragon. Oh my god, this thing's huge and very, very cool. Oh, whoa, look at this. It had like a golden tongue. So, don't mind if I do. Aha, uh -huh. to the north, I believe those are rabbits on the map. All right. Aha, uh -huh. and looks like we're in luck. We've got two rabbit's feet, eight rabbit hides, and four raw rabbit. Oof, now where did I park that guy? I think he was way over here, wasn't he? Yeah, right over here on the edge. Well, in fact, also, would you look at this? The engineer's hut is looking really freaking impressive. It looks like this thing's going to be two stories high. Very, very, very cool. What else has been going on here in the colony then? Aha, and the swineherd's hut needs brown concrete powder. So why doesn't he have brown concrete powder? What is wrong with the concrete mixer? So the concrete mixer needs brown dye, which means we need to get to the dyer's hut and work out how we can make brown dye. I thought we'd given him a recipe, but maybe we didn't. And crafting recipes, here we go. So we've got one more recipe slot, and it looks like we're going to have to use this to make brown dye. So brown dye is, ooh, cocoa beans, but we can't afford that. Cocoa beans are a bit expensive. Wait, no, that's, that's how you're supposed to make brown dye? With cocoa beans? That's insane. So what we're going to try and do is make a cocoa farm. I'm going to zip over to Farming Valley, which is where we do most of our farming. And I'm going to make a very quick and dirty cocoa farm. So the theory for growing these cocoa beans is that they grow on jungle logs, right? So what if we just put a couple of jungle logs up here and we splash some cocoa beans onto them? 
Yeah, there we go. And these should grow. And when they reach the maximum growth, I believe they make more than one cocoa bean. So if you've got enough bone meal, you can make these for days. There's a stack of bone meal. Grow you guys up. Don't mind if I do. Toss our cocoa beans on the floor. Now, do you get more than one bean? Yeah, you get three. Okay, perfect. So we have a way to farm cocoa beans. Fantastic. So there we go. We've got a ton of cocoa beans planted now. We're never going to run out of cocoa beans. And we can teach our dyer the cocoa beans brown dye recipe. Oh, that was a close one. I was really worried there. Now, of course, the big goal of this episode is to get us to a point where we can do the research so that next episode we can learn the nether mine. And that's why we're keen to watch Ginger until she completes building the Enchanter's Hut up another level. Now, I'm thinking maybe it was a mistake going Medieval Oak because there is a, a horrific amount of dyed wool needed for this build. And it's putting a real strain on my dye reserves and my wool reserves. Aha, uh -huh, excellent news. It looks like, yeah, the last piece that we designated has been finished as far as the wall goes. So I'll have to get my build tool out and just go along even further and expand that wall right to the very corners of our colony. Eventually, we want the wall to go all the way around the military rise, around the back of the suburbs, through the farming district, past the university. Then we're going to have like a docks district over on that side of things because the water is a natural barrier and then past the graveyard back up to the military district. And you know what? It's not actually going to take that long to get it going. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. It's not going to take that long to get it to go all the way around. Oh, very cool. Look at that. The mechanics hut has been completed. Oh, and here we go. 96% done. She's getting very close to having placed all the blocks for this hut. Now, once you upgrade a hut, you build the blocks then you remove the excess blocks that were there to begin with, and then the HUD is complete. So she's only really done about half of a job. We can, of course, help out by emptying her pack of some stuff. Because once her pack fills up with all the stuff she doesn't need to build with, she'll go down to the warehouse and try and deposit it. But no, since we're here, we can help her out and remove some of this burden. So in the meantime, we can do a little bit of tidying up, but she's very close to completion. Oh, it looks like Ferda has come to watch the fireworks as well. Oh, ho, ho, amazing stuff. The Enchanter is level three. Boom. That means we can go over to the research and get started on what we need to make the nether mine. Now, level four and five buildings require materials from both the nether and the end. So it's very important that we get the nether miner as a way to gather blocks from the nether without actually going there. So check my computer because we're going to need some paper, a stack. We're going to need some lapis, also a stack. And we're also going to need an ancient tome, Ooh, of which we've got four or, or three. They'll come in handy. Research, technology, here we go, more scrolls, boom. And when this research is complete, we can finally build the nether mine. Well, my friends, thank you very much for watching this episode of Better Minecraft Mine Colonies. Next episode, what we're gonna do is we'll have the research done for the nether mine and we'll be able to expand out this underground area that you see in here. And inside here, we're gonna put another mine and the nether mine and perhaps even like a warehouse some couriers, some houses. I don't know. The world is our oyster in terms of what we can build. So stay tuned for that. A big thank you to all of my Patreon members and my YouTube members. You guys are amazing. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, ding that bell. And until next time, guys, take care.